Howdy, this is Lemmy and Spurge here to talk to you today about how to choose a motorcycle. If you're watching this video, perhaps you're a rookie rider. You've no idea what motorcycle might be appropriate for you. Then again, you might be at the opposite end of the spectrum. You might be a seasoned vet who simply took a hiatus and found that the motorcycle market you return to is vastly different than the one that you left. In either case, we can help you out today. We're gonna to talk about some of the various categories that exist on today's motorcycle market to help you figure out which bike might be most appropriate for you. Now remember, this is just the first video in a series we have for beginning riders. We have some other videos on how to buy a new bike and how to buy a used bike. But today what we're gonna concentrate on is breaking down those classes so you know exactly what type of bike you might wanna look at when you walk into a dealer or check out that Craigslist ad. Now I'm gonna be talking to you about some of the features of each of these bikes that help them be good at a certain task. We're gonna debate some of the pros and cons of those construction pieces on the motorcycles themselves. And while Lem's breaking down the features for the bike, my job is to talk to you how the bike feels from an ergonomic standpoint. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of you out there that might have fallen in love with a certain style of bike. Take you know a sport bike, for example. Looks awesome, looks fast, hardcore lines, and that bike might be appropriate for you know aggressive rides with your friends or attacking a track day on a Sunday afternoon, but it's probably not the most appropriate machine if you're gonna be commuting back and forth to the office on a regular basis. Now, while we're not intending in this video to tell you what bike is right or wrong for you, what we would like to do is just give you some recommendations about you know, what you can expect from each of these machines and how it's gonna affect the actual riding that you're doing. Because just remember, the style of riding you might think you'll be doing might be a lot different than the riding you actually do. And because these bikes are constructed differently, they come in all shapes and sizes, much like many riders. It means they interact with people's bodies differently. So for example, take a look at me as I'm sitting on the sports track. My feet are firmly planted on the ground, and I feel like I have complete control of the bike. For new riders out there that have never ridden a motorcycle before, being able to have your feet firmly on the ground is gonna instill confidence in you right from the get-go as is the body positioning. You know, my hands are directly out in front of me. My shoulders are pretty much on top of my hips. And then when I put my feet up on the pegs, they're directly below me. So I feel like I'm just sitting nice and upright on the machine. Now, if you have any doubts about whether or not the motorcycle is right for you, you know, the same way you would try on a pair of jeans or clothes before you buy them, try out the bike. I'm not talking about a test drive. I'm talking about walking into your dealership, putting your ass in the seat, grabbing the handlebars and sitting there for 10 or 15 minutes, see how you feel. Now before we get too far, I'm going to encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can catch not just the rest of the videos in this series, but some of the other cool motorcycle content we roll out here at RevZilla.com. We're constantly reviewing parts and gear, and we also shake out new motorcycles too, which might help some of you looking for a new bike. Now we're going to break this video down very, very simply. We're going to kick things off with street bikes. If a bike was made to roll mostly on the pavement, we're going to be talking about it in this first section. After that, of course, we're going to get to the dirt bikes for those of you looking for an off-road adventure. Let's kick things off with one of my favorite classes of bike, and that is the standard. Standard motorcycles are usually fairly sporting machines, and they're best exemplified by having zero fairings on them. These things are generally fairly naked. You'll hear that term used from time to time. They're not sporting plastic side fairings. Now, these motorcycles are not the perfect tool for any job. However, they can handle lots and lots of different scenarios with a plum. For instance, this SV650 could very easily be taken to a track day, but it's also comfortable enough that you wouldn't mind taking an all-day trip on this motorcycle either. It's a very versatile machine. Spurge, how do you feel on this baby? So there's no surprise as to why the standard style of motorcycle is gonna be, you know, just a do-anything machine, and it's gonna be extremely appropriate for new riders. If you look at where my hands are, my hands are directly in front of me. There's maybe a slight drop to the bar, which means I have a little bit more weight on my wrist, but that's gonna benefit the rider because it puts a little bit more pressure on their front wheel, which makes the bike easier to steer. The other thing you'll notice, my shoulders aren't quite perpendicular to the ground. They're a little bit more forward than my hips, but then my feet are gonna be directly underneath me. And if you notice, I have an easy reach to the ground, so I have a firm control of the bike, much like we talked about there in that beginning segment. Thanks, Birch. What do you say we move ahead to the next bike? Next up, we have the sport bike. Sport bikes are patterned after road racing machines. You'll notice how sleek and aerodynamic this bike looks, and that's in part due to the plastic fairings on this motorcycle. Now, sport bikes are very appropriate, as I had mentioned, for racing. If you plan on doing a track day, a sport bike is just the thing. And you can also use them on the street, too, but I'd say they're probably best used for shorter, more spirited rides. Due to the aggressive body position on here, it's hard to remain comfortable for most riders on a sport bike for a really long time. 
Now the other reason too I wouldn't probably recommend these for a beginner unless you're in the beginner class of sport bikes is that the larger machines, the middleweights I can see Spurgey on here on this R6 or the larger bikes generally are extreme machines and when I say that I mean that in a lot of different senses. They're very very fast and they also have razor sharp braking and handling which doesn't really bode well for a beginner who might not have mastered inputs on the motorcycle. The other thing that's really extreme on these things too is the body positioning. Spurge, how are you feeling on that puppy? So, I mean, you can see right from the get-go compared to the other bikes we've talked about, I'm in a much more aggressive position. My hands, they're actually at or slightly below where my knees are. My shoulders are pitched forward. My ass is pushed way far back, as are my feet. And that's gonna put me in this really aggressive tuck down position. Now, this is a great position, like you said, if I'm planning on aggressively riding or tackling a track day, but if I'm just commuting back and forth you know, chances are 30 to 45 minutes, I'm gonna to start to grow uncomfortable. Now that's not to say that there's not riders out there that do it. There's plenty of riders that commute on these style of bikes. We're just gonna say that this might not be the most appropriate machine to do that on, especially when you consider some of the more advanced, you know, race style mechanics on this bike. Like the suspension, for example, if you're using this on the street and you start to hit potholes, bumps and bruises, you know, this is gonna transmit all of that back to the rider, which can cause you to feel a little bit unsettled. So the sport bike might not be the most appropriate machine for you to start out on. Excellent point, Spurge. Let's roll on the next bike. Alrighty, you can see now Spurgey is on arguably the antithesis of a sport bike, and that is the Cruiser. So cruisers are bikes built for a nice long, low cruise, as the name may imply. These things prioritize comfort over speed. Now there's a couple characteristics about a cruiser that make them particularly good for beginner riders. The first is that these bikes, even though they have very large engines, they have very large engines that deliver very controllable power. They're typically very forgiving for beginners who happen to make some mistakes. One of the other things too that makes them particularly suited to beginning riders is the fact that you'll notice this front wheel is kicked out just a little bit. We say that the frame has a little more rake. By having that front wheel out there, it makes this steering and handling a little bit more controllable on this motorcycle. And again, also forgiving to rookies who might happen to make a mistake or two. Now there's a class of rider too who might be very interested in the cruiser and that's those of you who have short inseams. If you're a shorter rider, a cruiser is almost universally a good choice because just about every one of them across the board has a very low seat height. So it means that even if you're not a large motorcyclist, even if you're on a large motorcycle, you'll find yourself able to easily control the bike. Now these things are built of course for comfort, not for speed. So Spurge, tell me all about how you're feeling on this puppy. Lem, you've finally got me on a Harley. And you can see that I am in much more of a slouched riding position. My hands are gonna be at or slightly above my shoulders, and my shoulders are gonna be, you know, kinda like slouched back with my ass almost kicked out in front of my shoulders a little bit. And then my feet are gonna have two different options. As you can see right here, they're gonna be kicked out in front of me using a forward control. Now I say two different options because cruisers are usually available in two different flavors. I've currently got the forward control on this bike, and that means that I'm actually gonna actuate my brake and my shift levers on my left side with my feet pushed forward. Now, if this bike were to have mids on it, what you would notice is that my feet would actually be sitting just slightly below my hips, and that's gonna be a much more, what I would say for me personally, comfortable riding experience, because it makes me feel like I have more leverage over the bike than something that's kicked out a little bit more in front, but really, it's gonna vary rider to rider. Excellent point, and as Spurgeon mentions, I personally prefer forwards when I'm riding a cruiser. I find that to be just a little bit more comfortable for me. So even among experienced riders riding the same bike, there's not even a consensus necessarily on what is right. So I'm gonna kind of reiterate what we told you the first time around. Spend some time on a bike, sit on it. It's not weird at all to be in a showroom or perhaps to park yourself on a used bike and just ask for 10 or 15 minutes to make sure the bike is comfortable for you. Let's move on to the next class of motorcycle. Already now we come to the class of motorcycle that offers more smiles per gallon than just about anything else, and that is the scooter. So scooters are kind of interesting. These are really offered in a broad variety of sizes. The smaller bikes are excellent for in-town work. If you live in an urban area and you wanna just run some errands, scooters are absolutely perfect. Now there's also a larger class of scooter known as maxi scooters, and those are much, much bigger with more powerful engines and they can actually attain motorcycle speeds. In fact, legally they're actually classified as motorcycles. They offer lots and lots of storage capacity and taking a really long trip on one isn't out of the equation at all. 
Now scooters are built a little bit differently than a regular motorcycle. Looking at this, it obviously visually is much different. Let's go through some of the construction features on here that make it a little different than some of the other bikes we've talked about already. First, let me direct your attention to the wheels on here. You'll notice these wheels are a much smaller diameter than the other bikes we've looked at. Generally, these contribute to the easy handling nature of a scooter. Note also the platform where Spurgeon has his feet there. The step-through design is sort of a hallmark of this scooter. It's entirely different in terms of where your feet sit than really almost every other motorcycle out there on the market. Note also underneath Spurgeon as well, there's plenty of storage. Believe it or not, there's a surprising amount of cargo carrying capability on a scooter, especially relative to its size. Now also in that same vicinity too is the transmission. We should talk about that just briefly. With the exception of older scooters, almost every single one of these things has an automatic transmission. So if the prospect of learning to drive a manual transmission vehicle is kind of daunting for you, a scooter might be the perfect gateway drug into the world of motorcycling. Spurds, I have to say you look adorable. You look like you're ready for a day shopping at the Italian market. How are you feeling on this puppy? You look good, you feel good, Len. That's what I always say. So when I'm sitting on this thing, I mean, <laughs> can't help but smile. But really what you're talking about from a body position standpoint, my handlebars are definitely closer to me than anything we've talked about so far. I feel like my hands are almost sitting at my knees. Shoulders are still right on top of my hips, but my legs are definitely more in front of me than anything else because if this was a motorcycle, my feet are sitting right where the engine would normally be. So I think if you've never ridden a motorcycle before, you know, you're know you not gonna notice that, but for those of you that are kind of coming off of maybe an MSF course where you've been practicing on a bike, you know, getting onto a scooter might be a little bit of a different experience for you, but you do have a lot more room and you do have that clear, you know, planted feel to the ground. And because these things are so lightweight, you never feel like you're intimidated. You know, the other point to make is if you are coming off of an MSF course, you know, this is not to be confused with a motorcycle and the fact that, like Lem mentioned, it's a fully automatic. So you don't want to grab that front lever thinking it's a clutch because it's actually a brake and you will throw yourself right over the front. But other than that, it's a fun little machine to learn how to ride a bike on. Well, Spurge, you look fantastic on your Italian shopping scooter there. What do you say we move on to the next motorcycle? Whee! Now this large barge you can see over here is Spurgeon, but Spurgeon is on another large barge and that's the touring motorcycle. You may hear touring bikes also called dressers or baggers. Touring bikes are meant to carry lots of stuff at high speeds for long distances. Now the signifying factor that makes a bike a touring bike is big, big storage, often integrated right into the motorcycle. You'll notice back there this thing has some huge saddlebags on it and the street glide that Spurgeon is on here is actually one of the more stripped down touring bikes you can put your money down on. A lot of full touring bikes actually also have a top case or top box on the back for additional bring it along capacity. Now because these bikes are meant to be ridden for long clips of time, the manufacturers typically make them very comfortable for riders, and I mean that in terms of both seating position as well as appointments on the motorcycle. It's not uncommon at all on a touring bike to see full audio systems and navigational aids just in an effort to make a rider's ride as good as possible. Now moving back to the touring bike providing lots and lots of comfort, again these are meant to keep riders happy in the saddle for quite a while. So I expect we're going to find that Spurgeon is very comfortable in this bike. Spurge, can you confirm or deny for us please? So I mean out of all the bikes we've talked about so far, this is the one that's definitely big enough to fit me from my size standpoint. There's plenty of room for me to move around. And really what we're going to see here is a mix of, you know, two different types of body positions that we talked about. Take a look at me from the waist up. I'm in a very neutral position. My hands are out in front of me, wider set bars, plenty of leverage here. My shoulders are above my hips, and I've got this really nice upright seating position. Now if you take a look from the waist down, with these floorboards, I've got a couple different options for where I want to put my feet. I can kind of kick my feet out a little bit if I want to, giving me more of that stretched out forward control, or I can kind of slide my feet back and use it for more leverage as if these were mid control. So there's plenty of options here for me to kind of move around and find what, what position works well for me. Now in addition to the rider comfort, there's also plenty of room out back if I want to bring a passenger along for them to move around comfortably too. But that's gonna bring us back to weight, which is what Lem was talking about earlier. You know, these bikes come in around seven, 800 pounds. You throw a passenger in the mix, it's a pretty heavy ride. Especially considering, you know, while I can get my feet on the ground for this, it's still gonna be kinda of hard to leverage this back and forth if I'm not really comfortable with the machine itself. Now, while we're not here to tell you what's right or what's wrong for your first motorcycle, we are gonna kinda of steer you away from certain bikes, and this would be one of them. Just because of how large this is, it's not gonna instill confidence right from the get-go for new riders. 
Great advice, Spurge. Now, one of the other bikes I want to talk about before we move on is actually kind of a throw to a blend of motorcycles we've already talked about, and that's the Sport Touring Machine. It's both a mixture of a sport bike as well as a touring machine like you can see here. Now, typically, they're going to give up a little bit of carrying capacity. Generally, they can't carry quite as many things as a straight-on touring bike, but these bikes also are considerably faster than a straight touring bike as well. One of the other hallmarks of that breed of motorcycle, too, is the aerodynamic fairings we have seen on a sport bike. They'll typically be very sleek looking motorcycles. And the riding position is sort of middling as well. You won't see the full upright position. You've got Spurgeon in over here, but you're also not going to see somebody on a sport touring bike all wadded up in that uncomfortable sport position either. It sort of splits the difference there. Now, before we move on, I do want to mention something else, too, about positioning. You may have noticed that just about every bike we've shown you up to this point has had a pretty neutral or intermediate riding position. With the exception of the Cruiser and the Sport Bike, both of those kind of at the extreme ends of the spectrum, most manufacturers are shooting for that sort of neutral riding position. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because it's a very successful riding position. The reason you see it on so many motorcycles is because so many motorcyclists are comfortable in that position. So if you do find yourself gravitating towards one of the bikes, again, towards the outside ends of the spectrum, whether it be sport bike or cruiser, I would encourage you to spend a little bit of time, again, on one of those more intermediate bikes, just so you know what else is out there. Now that we've got that out of the way, what do you say we head on to dirt bikes, Spurge? Let's get dirty. Check out this leggy beauty over here. No, I'm not talking about Lurch. Instead, I'm referring to the dirt bike you can see over here. When you say off-road motorcycle to most people, the thing that jumps into their head immediately is probably something like a dirt bike. These bikes are made to tackle the roughest terrain that Mother Nature has to offer, and as such, they're constructed in a very specific way. Let's start with a couple of those features. The first and probably most noticeable is the tires. You can see that these things are very knobby, super aggressive tires made to bite into the loose surfaces that dirt bikes are typically typically ridden on. The other thing to notice about this bike is how tall it is. It has lots and lots of suspension travel, and it also sits very high up. And that's because dirt bikes are meant to roll over some obstacles too. Tree stumps, logs, and rocks, they all get in the way, and having a bike that sits up high prevents the bike from being damaged. Now, one of the other important parts about a dirt bike, too, is you should know that this is a single cylinder machine. The motor is physically very small. Though it is pretty powerful on some motorcycles, it's kept small so the weight is kept down on the bike. When you're wrestling a bike around off-road and you have to pick it up after you've dropped it after a crash, which is fairly common in off-road riding, having a lighter weight bike really can help. These things are also not street legal. You need to know that going in. There's no headlight, no key, no taillight. There's a bunch of stuff that's missing on this bike that won't make it legal to ride around on the street. Now, when it comes to riding these things, again, riding off-road is really different than riding on the street. So, Spurge, how does that affect your, your seating position? So, you hit the nail on the head when you said this is a tall machine. I'm six foot three, and, you know, even as I'm standing up, I'm on my tippy toes on this bike. And that's got that 12, 13 inches of suspension travel there. Works great, but again, just keep in mind, you probably don't want to go to the taller end of the spectrum if you're just learning how to ride. Now, from a rider's standpoint, talking about the ergonomics, it's very similar to what we talked about with a standard riding position. My hands are out in front of me. It's definitely going to be a wider bar for maximum leverage, but you're going to notice that my shoulders are on top of my hips. I'm sitting upright, and then my feet are just below my hips, so I feel very comfortable. Now, the one thing to note with a dirt bike is this long, flat seat, and it is quite uncomfortable, but that's okay, but you're gonna spend most of your time standing up or kind of sliding back and forth. You're not gonna sit in one position too long because you're gonna use your body as a counterweight over terrain when you're out there riding with this machine. It's also one of the reasons you might see different style handlebars on different style dirt bikes because you want to make sure you're comfortable not just sitting down, but also when you're standing up. So the CRF 450 that I'm on right now is going to be one of the larger machines in the dirt realm. And while this bike itself might not be the most appropriate one for you to start off with, the beauty of dirt bikes is they come in a plethora of different sizes. So you can start off with as, something as small as a CRF 50, or you can work your way up throughout the range across pretty much every manufacturer out there. So there's going to be a dirt bike for you. And like Lem said, as long as you've got somewhere to ride it, this is an excellent machine to start riding on. All great points, Spurgey. The dirt bike really is a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite classes. What do you say we move into one of your faves next? Let's do it. 
Now I'm going to be telling you a little bit about this next type of bike, but the real expert is actually sitting on top of it. This is generally Spurgey's weapon of choice, and that's an adventure bike, also known as an ADV bike. Now these differ from a dirt bike in several important ways. They're larger, they're heavier, they have bigger, more powerful multi-cylinder engines, and they're also street legal. So these are bikes really you can think of as the Cadillac of dirt bikes. They're kind of enormous, but they're also much more powerful. There's pros and cons to this style of bike. Spurge, how do you feel on this baby? So Cadillac of dirt bikes is a great way to describe these. You can either look at these as like just giant, massive dirt bikes, or you could look at them as, you know, touring bikes with some off-road pretense to it. Now, I know Lem said that these aren't going to be as tall as dirt bikes, but keep in mind, these are still pretty damn tall. You know, at six foot three, I'm almost flat-footed on this F800, but for you shorter riders out there, just keep in mind, these might be intimidating as a first machine. From a rider's standpoint, when we're talking about ergonomics with this, very similar to what we saw with a dirt bike. Wide, flat handlebar, my hands are in front of me, my shoulders are on top of my hips, and then when I get my foot up on the peg, it's going to sit directly below me. And that's because a lot of adventure riders out there, if you are going to use this off-road, you're going to spend a lot of that time standing up the same way we talked about with a dirt bike. Unlike a dirt bike, however, this seat is going to be much more comfortable because most of the OEMs realize that the majority of riders looking at this style bike are probably going to be using it for putting down large amounts of miles on pavement, and therefore you're going to need a more comfortable seat for it. Now the one thing to note with this, they are a larger bike, they're a little bit pricier, and most of you out there are probably not going to want to consider the larger sect of ADV machines as your first bike. However, Lem has got a, a favorite section of his own that might be more appropriate for riders out there looking to tackle both on-road and off-road, and that's going to be dual sport. Indeed, that is another option. So a dual sport sits squarely between the dirt bike and the adventure bike. Think of it as a dirt bike with blinkers. It doesn't have nearly the amenities or road capabilities of an adventure bike, but what it does allow a rider to do is to take a dirt bike onto the street. This is great for riders who plan on either riding to the trail or riders who want to connect a series of trails with short pieces of pavement in between. They're road legal, they have emissions equipment, they also have all of the lighting and inspection items you might need in order to get a sticker onto your bike, but you still have most of the capability of a dirt bike. So we have reached the end of the video. We've covered most of the major classes of bike, although I think it's fairly obvious we did not get everything. There's lots of different subdivisions of bike, bunch of cool ones out there. Chopper cafe racers, and cafes, yeah. and super motards, all sorts of nifty motorcycles. However, we're not going to be able to pack them all in here, but we think we've given you enough information that you should be able to be well armed going out there and do a little research on your own. And that research should start over at Common Tread. We've written a slew of articles, great for new and returning riders. Remember too, this is just one video in our little mini-series here. We also have how to buy a new motorcycle and how to buy a used motorcycle. And I'm guessing if you've made it this far through the video, that's probably your next step. So make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you can keep up with all the content we have rolling out. From educational content like this to full bike reviews and product reviews, we've got a ton of information for you over at RevZilla.com. Now I want to thank you for joining old Lem Lem and Spurgey as we talked about how to choose your motorcycle. Enjoy the ride.